Good evening, folks. Frank Zarella here, Zor Capital. I'm going to do a quick video. Uh, see if we can find some setups for this week. Top momentum names uh, for November 10th. What, we'll look, what we're going to do is we're going to look to see if we can find some spe uh, setups specifically for tomorrow and perhaps even flag some stocks for the coming week. But first, uh, let's take a look at the indices. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of talking about the indices too much on a day-to-day -day basis just because I don't believe, I just don't believe that there's something relevant to say every day and every candle uh, doesn't have a meaning behind it. Uh, what we're looking at here is something we mentioned last week. It's the weekly uh, SPY up five weeks in a row. What's, what's, an, what's interesting here is that it's above its weekly up a Bollinger Band second week in a row. You know, in the past, a few times when we got there, uh, the market kind of like traded sideways to down, like you know, a little bit over here. You know, over here we had a nice run for a few more weeks, but then we had a, we lost it all. Uh, you know, two weeks after, right over here, um, over here, went above and then just sideways, right over here went above and then just pretty much sideways. So that's something to, to, to be in the lookout for because I'm a believer that the market goes up and down from all-time highs, 52-week highs, one-year uh, highs, 52-week lows, the middle. The market goes up and down. There's no such thing as a blue sky territory. Hey, we just hit a blue sky territory and it's okay to buy uh, blindly. I don't believe in that. Uh, more importantly... What's important to me is the setups underneath the surface, okay? As a swing trader, I'm looking for setups. Are they working? Are they showing up? Are they triggering? Are they following through? So what we're going to do today is, is see if we can find some for this week. Just to give you a quick note, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the top momentum names. Most of these names you more than likely have never heard of before, have never seen they tend to be smaller names under twenty dollars a share. Most of them don't have any numbers, or they don't they don't earn any money. Uh, like for example, ISEE stock, you know, made a big move more than likely on some type of announcement on very heavy volume. On this day, it traded twenty seven million shares. So if I had to take a wild guess, this must have been some type of phase one, phase two, phase three study. And now the stock is you know is setting up. Uh, it needs more time. So let's see if we can find some names. Here's another name. Un, this is an unknown name. Uh, had a big move here on 3.2 million shares. Traded salaries for a few days. Another move higher. Nothing here for me. CNS, CNST, Constellation Pharmaceutical. Another biotech stock. Had a big move. You know, I'll track this. It traded that day roughly... 8.2 million shares. If you look at this before then, it was trading 237,000 shares. That was the average volume. And that's what you're going to see with some of these names that unless you know the stock fundamentally and, and, and own the stock via fundamentals, you're not going to catch this first initial move. What you want to do is you're going to miss this first initial move. You want to wait for the sideways action, 10 to 15, 20 days of consolidation. And at the very end of that consolidation, what you tend to see is very small tight candles, inside days, NR7s, and that's usually on very low volume, and that is usually when uh, the stock is ready for a second move higher. So let's see if we can find some so that way I can give you an example. Xnet, same thing, software company, just needs more time. Rita, biotech stock, needs more time. SSSI, you know, here's a similar situation. Apparel stores, stock goes up from roughly a dollar to two dollars. It uh, retraces a little bit down three days in a row, and then it, it, off to the races again. This is the first pullback. Here's pretty much the second pullback. You had an opportunity right over here, but here's exactly what I'm talking about. The stock starts to go sideways, and look at these candles, how they start to tighten up here. And then once you get that second uh, move higher, that second range expansion, that's when you want to jump on board again. You know, Hovanian, here's a stock that did a reverse split uh, down from, 
you know, eighty dollars a share, ninety dollars a share is before a split, all the way down to fifty-two week lows, and then it takes off. Okay, this big move here, it takes off, then it starts to go sideways. Look how tight these candles get. Another move higher, sideways. Look how tight these candles get, and then off to the races again. So what you want to do is you want to catch that first and second consolidation. You want to be involved. Right, you know, when this kind of like ends and take it for this run. Most stocks uh, in the short term move anywhere between three to 10 days, three to five days. They have a nice little momentum burst and sideways sit down. Uh, momentum burst, sideways sit down, and they just rinse, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat over and over again. MCF, similar situation, big move higher. You know, who knows why stock was trading near 52-week lows. I mean, who says you can't make money buying 52-week lows? This stock doubled from the lows, okay? Picking a bottom is different than buying stocks near lows, obviously. Uh, but this stock goes up and, you know, it gives you an opportunity. You don't want to chase these stocks higher. Uh, you want to wait for them to set up and give you a nice risk-reward trade. INMD, again, similar situation, IPO. You can see these, these candles, it's exactly when we got involved in 1021, right over here, uh, right over here. Why? It prints an inside day through the high, a nice little burst. You get off sideways again on 11.1, which is right over here, long 32 through previous day high. Uh, and that's what you see, a burst, sideways burst, sideways to down. Yeah, this looks okay, but it reports on the 15th. This one looks okay as well. It was on my list right over here. Uh, really couldn't didn't get a chance to go, but this, it still looks good. Stock went up huge on 7 million shares. The average volume before this surge higher was roughly 739,000 shares. It trades 7.1 million shares based on earnings. Goes up. From you know under whatever 312 to foreign change sideways. I like the stock LLNW through Friday's high, which is 435. For me, you know, buy stop 440, 445, stop loss right over here at 420. Right, so in the short term, in my opinion, what works best is momentum and also mean reversion. This is a mean reversion play right here for me. Uh, the stock's been trading, so, you know, again, uh, Rite Aid, just like Hovanian. You know, tremendous selling pressure. The stock does a reverse play right over here, one for 20. It goes sideways for one, two, three, four, five, six months. Uh, and all, these, all this means very simply is that you have a stock here that the sellers are in control. That's just... Simple, you can see that. Then it gets to a level here where the buyers and sellers find some type of equilibrium where the sellers are running out of supply or the buyers are just buying a little bit more than the sellers have to sell. And then here at the very end, you see that the buyers are, sta are taking control. How do you know that? Here's a low, higher low, higher low, and more than likely right here, this is gonna be another higher low. So this stock I'm gonna flag for the week. And once I see a, a little, probably an inside day candle, I'm, I'm gonna wanna take uh, this trade after it goes through that green candle. So right a flag for some time this week. Uh, Tiffany buyout, uh, yeah, buyout, uh, AMKR. You know, this is setting up, right? Up and big, on big, uh, on earnings, big volume. Just gotta wait for a better setup. Some of these names are not as liquid as you may want it to be. And liquidity is completely relative, okay? If you got a huge account, a million plus, some of these, you can't trace some of these stocks. Uh, but something like ALGN, it's a different story. Um, up big here on huge volume, relative speaking, 4 million shares. Stock's been trading sideways for the most part. Prints an inside day on very low volume. I like this stock going through 261.28 with a stop loss right over here at the day's low, 255.65.
The way this will work for me very simply tomorrow, Monday, if it doesn't gap up, I'm looking to put a buy stop 10 cents above this high and my original stop, my initial stop would be here this low. I'm going to look for a little momentum burst three to five days. I have no idea what the market, what this stock is going to give me. Uh, you know, the target is always up. You can make up targets. You can say I'm risking five. I'm not going to take less than 10. That's not the way the market trades. Uh, sometimes... You know, uh, depending on market conditions, you might get 10% in a matter of five days. Sometimes you might get 3%. Things are always dynamic. So the target is always up. And what you want to do is you want to take some off on the way up and, and you want to raise your stop without choking the trade. So ALGN. Here's another one. This, this is another mean reversion play. Okay, stock is down multiple days in a row. One, two, three, four, five. I like the stock going through 465 with a stop at 447. That means my buy stop is 10, 10 cents above 475 with my original stop at 447. What we have here is uh, you know, a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Okay, and we want a break of that pattern. Uh, for example, here. And then what you want to do is when you have, you're down one, two, three, four, five, you want to buy through this high. Your first original stop is here. Then you want to raise your stop to this low, then to this low, then to this low. This is one of my favorite patterns here in the short term is these mean reversion plays where you have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows and, we, and you're looking for a change of that pattern. And once you get that change, you're raising your stop to the, to, to the previous day low as every day goes by. So AKRX. Spar, another situation you can see here up on decent volume relative to the stock, probably on, probably based on earnings, 1027, probably based on earnings. I like the stock going through 1779 with my initial stop at 1735. What that means, very simply, my buy stop is at 1789. This is for tomorrow and tomorrow only. Another one, BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond. Stock went up huge on a change of CEO, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, down three days in a row, I like to start going through 1403, buy stop at 1413, original stop at 1368. We have no idea if these things are gonna trigger tomorrow, but you know they're on the list. Tesla was one that we flagged last week. Beautiful setup. Stock goes up huge, 29 million shares uh, on the back of their earnings announcement, 29 million the next day. I'm not a fan of chasing stocks, okay? I want to wait for the pullback. And here we got it here and here, uh, 1031 long, 317.92, down three days in a row, up today through high. So I got involved here, same thing here, 11.4, down five days in a row. Uh, up today through high, bought multiple times. Had a lot of conviction on this trade. Now, look at the volume here. When you see this type of volume, when you see the volume decrease, the way it decreased for Tesla, for Tesla, that's usually when you know the stock is ready to move higher. So we got involved here. I just I just bought 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 multiple times. Three seventeen uh, ninety nine. Three seventeen ninety two. 319.89, and I sold it last week right over here on this day. S Gen. What we're looking for is we're looking for contraction. We're looking for stocks that have momentum and are now going through some type of contraction. Here's a perfect example of an inside day. Right over here, uh, right over here. The average 20 day volume for PDD was 6.2 million shares. In this day, the stock prints an inside day on 3.4 million shares. That's what you wanna look for. You wanna look for these tight candles on very low volume, that usually means the stock is ready to move higher again. You know, this this looks okay. A little too extended for me, but uh, it looks okay. Vips, their report this coming week. I own it. 
Uh, I'm going to sell it before earnings. But again, look, big bar, big volume. I'm not looking to chase. I wait for the contraction. Inside day here on what? On very low volume compared to the average 20 day volume. We'll look at the top 200 and see if we can find something. And this is what happens. Again, you know, these are not, we, we've, we've come across maybe one name brand company that, that people know, Tesla. Uh, and this is what you're going to see. That most of these names are not well known. The best performing stocks in the short term for the most part, you know, are stocks that are priced under, you know, $20 a share, small caps. Uh, the most of biotech, pharmaceutical, technology, um, and that's you know that's what we have an interest in. We we don't. I'm not interested in sexy stories. I'm interested in what performs best in the short term within my time frame. Here's another beauty, uh, Biogen, which we flagged last week as well. We, it just needed more time. Uh, you know, up on you know 21 million shares, which was it's huge for this stock. You don't want to chase here unless you're a day trader. You wait for the pullback, the, the proper setup. We got involved here on Friday long, 290.82, down four days in a row, up today through the high. It is important that when you're playing these mean reversion plays of lower highs and lower lows, that you wait for the stock to get through the previous day high. And the reason why is four days can turn into five, five days can turn into six, Six days can turn into seven, and so on and so on. You know, GameStop was one. Looks okay, but here's GameStop. 11-1. Where was 11-1? Right over here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. What you see very simply, lower highs and lower lows. Goes for this high, and it's just up. Roughly five days in a row. That's the setup. It's one of my favorite setups in the short term. DDD, I have this flag up 6 million shares, probably numbers, earnings. Here's the anchor VWAP from that day, 200 day moving average. This stock has been dead for years. Uh, and we've been noticing lately that a lot of these stocks near 52 week lows have been the best performing stocks. Okay, uh, so let's look at DDD. 9.59, initial stop is 9.27, buy stop for tomorrow, 9.69, sell stop, nine uh, yeah, sell stop 9.27. Here's another one, up 2 million shares on this day, more than likely earnings. Sideways action. Here's the v, uh, the VWAP, the anchor VWAP from that day, which I think it's a great tool. Uh, like the to stock going through 96.08. Initial stop 93.15. Flow. Okay. See, again, most of these names are, these are not name brand companies. Here's another one. Oh, looks okay, a little extended for me, but you know, it could be a short term play. Uh, big volume here. 5.5 million shares, more than likely, based on numbers. Uh, here's the anchor VWAP down one, two, three, four, five days in a row. I like the stock LRCX, 273.25. Initial stop, 269.10. Buy stop is 10 cents above there. All right, that's 220 names. And so far, we came across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven names, eight names, all right? And Rite Aid is number nine, which we're going to flag to see uh, for later on this week to see if it sets up. 
Now, these names are for tomorrow. Now, we don't know which stock is going to trigger. By trigger, I mean by going to the previous day high plus 10 cents. We have no idea which of these stocks is going to be the best performing stocks. We might have, you know, we might have a gut feeling, but we don't know. So the point is that once you have them, once you get them, they trigger, you put the orders in and let the market do whatever it is it's going to do. Half the trades will be losses. What you want to do is you want to minimize your losses and make sure your winners are bigger than your losses. The target is always up. We don't know what we're going to get, what the market is going to give us. We can make up targets, okay? I can say LLNW is going to 10 I just made it up, go to 650. But the point is that when it comes to swing trading, most of these stocks, they just move in small bursts that might last three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days, 10 days maybe at most, then they go sideways to down. Uh, years ago, if you if you read IBD and Business, Business Daily, they were going for 20% winners. And after they got to that 20% uh, a profit, tar a profit target, they pretty much sold it because st stocks tend to consolidate, go sideways to down. And when it comes to swing trading, that means you're in the moving business, okay? You want to jump on the ride. Once it starts to lose momentum, you want to take that money and move it to a horse that's just getting started. I hope the video helps. So trade them well and be well.